Hi, this is Darren DeVoe with TX3 Studio. So the question is, I want to animate a really cool fight scene. How do I do that? How do I bring in reference video into Blender and then use it as a guide? Well, in my latest film, I had a particular fight scene. Uh, and I actually, truth be told, I used the uh, this trailer for Batman as a reference. And so how did I accomplish this? Well, the first thing I did was I downloaded this video. I uh, just go to Google and type in YouTube download, save YouTube video or whatever. And, and there's a dozen different websites that you can do it. I've already done that. So after downloading this video, I would have gotten this. This is just straight from YouTube. I get rid of the, uh, the audio portion. And now what I would do is I would just convert that, render it out as a as a series of image files. Uh, and now generally I'd want, I don't need, this is just being used as reference, so I don't want the quality of those image files to be that great. I want them to be fairly small, and I'll explain that in a minute. And then I'd render that animation. And so now it is currently rendering the entire uh, movie that I downloaded from YouTube. Okay, so now I've downloaded my fi film from my reference video and I've converted it into a set of image files. How can I bring that set of image files into Blender to use as a reference? Well, I could, one option is to make it a background image. So I can go to my 3D view, I can go to the background images, and I've already actually added it. Uh, add an image and then choose the, uh, the image sequence that we just created. It, and you'll have to do some fiddling with the number of frames and then it's generally best to turn on auto refresh and cyclic and so now you can see that I have that video as a background this however is a fairly unwieldy way to go I don't like going this way because it's kinda in the way um, another option would be to use the video sequence editor okay and so now I've got the reference image down here in blender Okay, now that option I also consider to be unwieldy because it your UI becomes so cluttered and ugly. Uh, so my preferred method is to uh, have my animation file here and then in a second instance of Blender over here is where I will add that image sequence. Okay, so you got the bad guy running towards Batman. Okay, so and then in this second file, this is where I'm going to be doing all my animation. I've got uh, my character who's going to be copying Batman. Um, and then I've got the bad guy on a second layer. There he is. All right, and now it just becomes an animation fun fest. So going back to this video, let's see, I've got the camera kind of at pretty much a straight on uh, parallel or perpendicular shot. So looking at the camera, if I want the action to be flowing in the X direction, then I'm going to have the camera over here. I'm going to have to move it back some. Okay, and let's just focus on the bad guy. He is going to be running towards Batman pose mode specific in a moment here let's just set up the basic position that he looks like he's in okay now comparing that to this shot okay so now I would generally notice how I put a marker there now let's actually get the shot now going back let's actually refine it okay. and now I actually have two monitors and so in general I would use two monitors I would have this over on my other monitor and this over well on my main monitor. Okay, that looks pretty close to this position. Insert uh, rotation keys on everything and then insert a location key on that guy. And now I just iterate. Okay, that looks to be the first right here. Let's have the next keyframe right here, which is uh, Let's see, I went from 91 to 99, so that's eight frames forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's see what has happened. 
Now this foot is forward. He's got a big time lean. This arm has gone back. He's ready to tackle Batman. Now I insert available. I just want to copy. Okay. And now obviously there are going to be some steps in between there, which I'll have to tweak later on. Okay, but then I would go forward, perhaps to this frame, which is, and I'm going to put a marker there so I know where these frames are, and that would be on frame 105. So I'm from 99 to 105, so that's six frames. One, two, three, four, five, six. I think this foot moved forward. I'd have to look for sure. And he's going up to tackle. And now at this frame, I would then probably turn on my main character and get him into the mix. Okay, and so his position is up a little bit. He's like jumping for some reason. Okay, let's insert rotation keys on everything, except for this is the only one that actually changes location. Okay, go back to him, make sure that I have set up everything as it's supposed to be. No, actually, okay. Okay, boom. All right. And now, really, from then on, it's just the, the next shot that you think is a significant one. Okay, and at this point, the camera changes. Uh, and let's actually give that thing a name. Cam, just for a cam change. Okay. Uh, and it happens at frame 109. And so, the, so four frames later. One, two, three, four. All right, this is where the next, where we're gonna, so this whole thing has been happening in the camera here. So here's been the first shot. Let's put a marker here. And this camera, now I'm gonna press Control B. That makes this marker associated with this camera. Okay, and now at this point we get a camera change. So I'm going to create a new camera just by duplicating, Shift D. Okay, now I've got this new camera which is selected and I'm going to press Control B and we notice what happens. This new camera is much closer to the action. It's closer to here probably. So let's look. So the first camera is associated with this marker once I press, once, when I had it selected and I press Control B. The second camera is associated with this marker when I had this marker selected and this camera selected and so it'll automatically shift at that, at that uh, marker. And now it's just repeating the process. I would have my characters, now on this frame, it looks like Lance's arms have gone down a little bit, or I should say Batman's. Um, and probably his chest is rotated some too. So let's insert available here. Okay, and now it's just continue repeat. You just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. You move on to some next keyframe, this one maybe, and you animate it. A marker here so that I know that's where the the next keyframe happens that I animate move this one forward to there and animate it looks like Lance went down a little bit bringing an arm down bringing an arm down whatever okay and now obviously you're gonna have to tweak it a lot but the point being so this is how I generally like to bring in foot in my animations this is exactly how I did the fight scene eight minutes into my most recent video of Giants in the Earth, scene J1. The link is there. I'd love it if you'd watch it. Give me some feedback.